Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. Happy Saturday, everybody. Hope your weekend and your day is going well so far. We've got a new day, which of course means a new NBA player prop video to share with you guys. I got a ton of picks to hand out today that I'm very excited about. And just responding to somebody in the comments yesterday, yes, whether they win or lose, I am always excited to give out picks to you guys. It is a passion. I love doing this. I love making videos. So rain or shine, win or lose, I love giving you guys picks. I'm sure when I hand out losers, you guys don't love when I give out picks, but I love giving out picks, win or lose, regardless of the circumstance. With that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, drop a comment down below, all that good stuff. Also, happy St. Paddy's Day. Hope you guys enjoy the St. Patrick's Day weekend. Got my Celtics jersey here. Uh, obviously, of course, be safe, but have fun. Um, again, we got a ton of picks to get to today, but real quick, let's do a quick little recap of what happened last night. So, of course, yesterday we had our five-leg Freaky Friday parlay. We didn't hit it. It was a plus 975, a pretty big one. Um, we hit three out of five legs. Uh, you see here Colin Sexton over 19.5 points hit. Kawhi Leonard under 25.5 points hit. We Actually, that was the second night in a row that we had bet that under 25.5 point prop. On Thursday, he had 27 points, and we we lost that. We missed the mark on that one. Uh, but yesterday, he finished with 23 points, so we did hit yesterday finally so second time was the charm for that Kawhi Leonard under 25 and a half points mark and then we also hit on the Wendell Carter Jr. Uh, over 19 and a half points plus rebound mark where we missed was the Cade Cunningham over 19 and a half points spot this will be the last I'm going to bet Cade for a while uh, he's burned us twice this week so far uh, technically three times because we also threw him in another parlay as well uh, I think we missed the trend he was he was playing amazing post all-star break it was it was really heating up uh, I think he's starting to cool off a little bit I don't know if it's injury or just he just hasn't been shooting well so we're gonna kind of probably avoid Kate Cunningham and the Pistons as a whole which most of you are probably screaming into the screen right now duh but uh, he was hot so I was riding it and it seems like the trend has fallen off and then KCP over 10 and a half points plus assists uh, we missed the mark on that one but Regardless, we're back today. I've got six straight props, six straight props to share with you guys today and a three-leg parlay to close out the weeks that I think you guys will like. All right, guys, let's dive right in. First leg, or sorry, first prop of our slate today. It's the weekend, guys. Give me a break. Uh, first slate, first prop of today's slate uh, is in the Brooklyn Nets-Indiana Pacers game, which kicks off at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're going with Cam Thomas of the Brooklyn Nets over 22.5 points. We're going to kick this over to the Outlier screen now. Guys, you know what Outlier is. They are the best sports betting tool on the market today. There is a special link in the description below. Seven-day free trial to try it out for yourself. They are a great sponsor. We thank you, the Outlier, for always sponsoring the videos and the channel. It really is the best sports betting tool on the market. There's so much insight and so much data. I only show you a little bit of it, but there's so much more to Outlier. You guys will not regret subscribing. All right, so here we go. This is Cam Thomas, over 22.5 point prop. At first glance, not the best. He's hit this in four of his last 10 games. We stretch that down to his last 20, 50% hit rate, 10 of his last 20 games. He's cashed this over. On the 2023 season as a whole, a 43% hit rate, 22 out of 51 games. He's cashed this over. And at a first glance, the head-to-head -head might look okay, but the last time he played Indiana was December 10th of 2022. We're talking over a year ago was the last time he played them. He had 33 points in what was a pretty high-scoring game, 136-133 win for the Nets. So the data is not it's not terrible, but it's not fantastic. So Tasso, why do you like this prop? Well, it really is all based on the matchup here. You look at the Indiana Pacers; they are a bottom of the barrel defensive team. They actually they're the second worst overall defense in the NBA in terms of points allowed on the year, giving up over 121 points per game. That is 29th in the league. It's pretty, pretty bad, but pretty good for the sake of hitting point overs. Overall on the season, the Indiana Pacers are a bottom five defensive teams against the shooting guard position in terms of points allowed, giving up 29 points per game to the shooting guard position. I went on Fantasy Pros to go ahead and check the recent match ahead, the recent uh, positional data defensively for uh, Indiana. And although it's not as bad as it is here on their season total, they are still one of the worst teams in the NBA in terms of shooting guard defense. They are right now the sixth worst team in the NBA defensively against the shooting guard position over their last 15 games. So it's really not great. Again, it's not necessarily as bad as you see here, but even here, 29 points per game, they were bottom five. Now they're bottom six. So Pretty much the same, honestly. Um, instead of giving up 29 points per game, though, they're giving up about 24. So it's a little bit less, but still, at 24 points per game to opposing shooting guards, that puts them in the bottom half, in the bottom uh, 10 of the league. Excuse me. So a really bad defensive team in Indiana. Uh, this game has a pretty decently high point total, too. Uh, one of the higher point totals 
for the night. So a higher point total. The Brooklyn Nets are one of these teams where they don't own their draft picks, so there's really no point in losing. They're, I mean, and Cam Thomas is a player who's obviously trying to make his mark in the league. These are the kind of matchups and the kind of games that I like to see because there, there's a lot for a player like Cam Thomas to gain, to gain in a matchup like this and not much for him to lose. Again, the Brooklyn Nets, not like they can tank. It's not like they can go ahead and tank for a draft pick or whatever. They have no other incentive but to play hard. And I think Cam Thomas will cash this line. I mean, he's had some pretty big games. Look at versus Charlotte, another really bad defensive team. He had 31 points uh, versus Cleveland, which actually is a pretty good defensive team. He had 29 points, uh, 26 points versus Boston. I mean, these are good teams. He's had a couple of pretty big games against good teams. Um, I do think he'll have a pretty big game tonight versus a really, really bad Pacers team. Defensively, I should say. Indiana overall are actually not that bad of a team, but defensively, they're kind of a nightmare. And again, guys, this is a part of our straight prop segment. So you see here uh, on DraftKings is minus 120 odds. But you can get this on basically every sports book for between minus 119 and minus 125. Pretty solid prop. All right, guys, second prop I'm going to give you guys tonight is in the Hornets Sixers game. It's at 7 p.m. each time. I'm going to probably butcher the name, which is crazy because I am a European, so I should be able to get this. But Vasilij Micic. That's the best I'm going to do. Uh, over 17.5 points plus assists. Just realized my screen was over. Apologies for that, guys. Uh, Vasilij, over 17.5 points plus assists here. Uh, I, we got this at minus 130 on DraftKings, but it is available on pretty much every sportsbook's minus fan duel. The data is pretty good. Seven of his last 10 games, he's cashed this over for Charlotte. And in 10 of his last 20 games, but you see here, the, one of the big reasons why is the minutes. You see, he was barely playing, and in the last few games, he's been playing at least 28 minutes in each of his last, I believe that's seven or eight games. So with all the injuries with, with Charlotte, with their season really being over, uh, Micic has really been playing a lot more, and he's been doing pretty well in that role. Again, just narrowing this down a little bit, look at his last five games. Four of his last five, he's cashed this over. He just missed the mark against Washington. But you see a couple of big games. I mean, his last two in particular, look at versus Memphis, 25 points and eight assists, and he had 21 points and three assists versus Phoenix just last night. So they are on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. Um, a player like Michich, again, kind of like the Cam Thomas thing, uh, there's he, he's everything to gain and not much to lose by playing here. He's good, you know. There's no rest for a player like this. This isn't Kevin Durant. This isn't a superstar. This is a guy who's trying to make it in the league, who's a fringe bench player, who has been given an opportunity to play more minutes, and he's going to take that opportunity and run with it. Blowout or not, I think he's going to play at least 30 minutes tonight, which is pretty good. All right, look at the Sixers overall. They're not a bad defensive team versus the point guard position. Actually, here on the season, they're pretty good. But over the last 15 games, they're okay. Over the last 15 games, they ranked bottom 12 in the NBA in terms of points allowed to opposing point guards. So, again, they're not a, one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA in terms of points and assists allowed to point guards, but they haven't been particularly great either. Uh, this is a game the Sixers are pretty heavily favored here. Uh, it has blowout potential. Um, I just think Michich, he's going to cover. And, oh, by the way, on the head-to-head -head data, he did play the Sixers on March 1st not too long ago, which is a couple weeks ago. And he had 13 points and 7 assists, and that was kind of a closer game. And he did that in 28 minutes. So he plays at least 28, 30 minutes. I think this is pretty much, I don't want to call it, a, nothing's a guarantee, but a pretty solid prop. All right, guys, this is the third prop I'm handing out in today's slate. Comment down below St. Patty's or St. Pat's or whatever you want to do for St. Patrick's Day. Comment down below. And maybe if you guys want, throw in what you guys are doing tonight, any St. Patrick's Day traditions you guys do. You know, whatever you want. This is a community. You guys go ahead, drop comments down below. Share stories. Share what you guys are planning for the night, what you guys typically do. You go get corned beef, whatever the case may be. Go comment down below uh, St. Patty's Day and maybe a little bit like what your traditions are, what your plans are for the evening. Um, again, we're a community. Let's just, let's talk it out, guys. Uh, here we go. Third prop of today's slate. We're in the Timberwolves Jazz game, which kicks off at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Our are going Colin Sexton of the Utah Jazz under 28.5 points plus assist. Now, last night we bet his over 19.5 points, and he did well for us in that parlay, and he cashed, even though the parlay didn't hit. Uh, he did his part. This is the second night of a back-to-back, -back, and although last night you played a Hawks team that is not very good defensively, you're now playing a Minnesota team that is pretty damn good defensively. So much so in the last 15 games, the Minnesota Timberwolves have the fourth best defense against opposing shooting guards in the NBA. And on the season, it's it, they actually rank number one on the season, uh, number one in points allowed, number two in assists allowed in their last 15 games. So even putting it in a smaller sample size, they are still one of the best teams defensively against the shooting guard position. He has cashed this under in eight of his last 10 games, including last night. We just put, took the points. We didn't take the point plus assist mark. Uh, in his last 20 games, 15 of his last 20 games, he has cashed this under. In the 2023 season as a whole, a 71% hit rate, 47 out of 66 games. He has cashed this under. 
Each of the last five times he's faced off with the Minnesota Timberwolves, he has cashed this under, including the two times they played this year. Back in November, he cashed this line heavy. Now, he was not playing as many minutes as he has been lately. He Now he's a starter. He plays a ton of minutes for Utah. But uh, I don't think that really makes too much of a difference here. I love this line, and honestly, for the value, it's really solid. Again, on DraftKings, you're getting it at minus 130 odds, but everywhere else you're getting it for about minus 120, minus 125. A really, really solid prop. There's really no better. Uh, this might be my favorite prop of the slate. Coming off a of back-to-back, I know the Jazz have some injuries, kind of what I said last night. Like, they have a couple of guards who are out, which means that, oops, that's not good, uh, which means, like, Sexton's probably going to play a ton of minutes. But second out of a back-to-back, I just don't see it happening here. Um, no, that's his over 22.5 point. You look at the over 20, just look at the point mark. Yeah, so I love this prop here. All right, guys, for the fourth prop of our slate tonight, we are targeting the Blazers-Pelicans game, which is off at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're going with DeAndre Ayton of the Portland Trail Blazers over 32.5 points plus rebound. Now, at first glance, again, it's kind of similar to how I've been throwing Josh Giddy in a couple of bets. People are, are, are rightfully eerie, uh, but this prop is pretty solid. Minus 105 on DraftKings. You get it in mean, a range of minus 105 all the way to minus 120 underdog. It is available on practically every sports book here. But he has been covering this at a really high rate. Seven of his last 10 games, he has cashed this over. The thing with DeAndre Ayton is he's a really talented player. It just always feels like he just doesn't give a shit. And so when he actually starts to give a shit, and, and lately it feels like he actually cares, he's been having some pretty big games. Like, you look at the stat lines, I mean, 33 points, 19 rebounds. 31 points, 14 rebounds. 22 points, 15 rebounds. Uh, 30 points, 19 rebounds. 26 points, 19 rebounds. You know, he still misses here and there. Um, but overall, he's been having some really solid games. Again, here's the year-long data, just a 30% hit rate on the year, but you see a lot of red in the beginning, and of late, a lot more green. He's really starting to turn the corner here, <coughs> here in Portland, excuse me. Now, this is kind of what I thought for DeAndre Ayton when he got traded to the Blazers, because this Blazers team doesn't have a lot to work with in general, so I thought that DeAndre Ayton coming to Portland, not having to share the court with the likes of Durant and Booker and, and, and all these pieces that he's had over the years, and Phoenix, I thought that him going to Portland, he would just put up crazy numbers and get himself paid even more. Um, he hadn't done, been doing that for most of the year, but of late, he's starting to look like that player that I thought the Blazers were getting when they traded for him. You look at the head-to-head -head matchup, the last time these guys played on February 10th, he had 18 points and 17 rebounds. He did cash this over, and New Orleans, that was a low-scoring game, and he still managed to cash it. Look at the right side of the screen, defensively, the, Pacers, the Pelicans, excuse me, not a great defensive team versus centers. They are bottom eight on the year in rebounds allowed to opposing centers, and, and they are uh, bottom half the league in points allowed, giving up 18.7 points per game. And in their last 15 games, the New Orleans Pelicans are bottom 10 in the NBA in points allowed to opposing centers. So Pelicans, they haven't been great all year, and they've actually been even worse over the last 15 games or so. Uh, they are on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. They just played the Clippers last night. I think DeAndre Ayton is a pretty good bet here to cash. All right, guys, two more props in our straight prop segment before we move on to the parlay segment. This one, we're targeting the Knicks-Kings game. It's off at 10 p.m. Eastern time. We're going with Josh Hart of the New York Knicks over 27.5 points plus rebounds plus assists. Josh Hart has been on a tear of late. He's covered this line in eight of his last 10 games. You stretch that down to his last 20, 12 of his last 20 games, a 60% hit rate. You saw, he, obviously, he had that hot streak here where he was just going on a tear uh, for the Knicks. He had a couple triple doubles in there too. Um, and the head-to-head -head matchup you see here, he has a 100% hit rate. The last time these two teams played back March of last year, he had 9 points, 15 rebounds, and 7 assists. I understand that was a year ago, but he did still cash this, and this Kings team is practically the same team as last year. This prop is at minus 115 on DraftKings, and it's available on pretty much every sportsbook around that minus 115 mark. Um, some injuries here. Obviously, still no Mitchell Robinson, still no Julius Randle, and Ananobi, although he says he's going to play, um, he is a game-time decision with an elbow injury. My thing is that even if he does play, it's clear that the elbow kind of is a problem. Um, so we'll be interested to see how much Ananobi plays, what the impact he will have is. But the matchup here is fantastic. Over the last seven games, the Sacramento Kings have the second-worst defense in the NBA to opposing shooting guards. That does fare well for Josh Hart in terms of scoring. In, in every other uh, statistic category, um, the Kings have not been great versus the shooting guard position. On the season, you see here they are bottom five in points allowed, giving up 29 points per game to opposing shooting guards. And they are about middle of the league, middle of the road in the league, excuse me, um, we're giving up 6.3 assists per game. Rebounds are not fantastic. Uh, they're actually a better rebounding te uh, defensive rebounding team excuse me, um, against the shooting guard position. But uh, the Kings, again, of late, the last seven games, they've been even worse than what the data here shows. Um, 
Josh Hart's been covering at a pretty high rate of late. I think he'll cover here also. Uh, it is minus 115. Out of all the picks today, I'm not going to say this is the least confident of any pick I'm in. Um, I would just say this is maybe the riskiest. But again, with Ananobi possibly being dinged up, um, with the Knicks also having their other injuries, he has been covering at a pretty high rate of late. And even, you see, he missed two two times. He missed it in that low-scoring, ugly game versus the Sixers. He had 9 points, 11 rebounds, and 2 assists. And his last game versus Portland, he had 7 points, 15 rebounds, and 2 assists. He just barely missed the mark. Um, the dude grabs rebounds. He plays hard. I think when you mix in the fact this is a terrible defensive team scoring-wise versus the shooting guard position, I think he should be able to tack in at least 15 points. And you see here... If he scores at least 15 points, it's really all he needs because he covers the rest of it in rebounds and assists. All right, guys, for the sixth and final prop of the straight prop segment, we're sticking with the same game, that Knicks-Kings game, which gets up at 10 p.m. Eastern time. We're going with De'Aaron Fox of the Sacramento Kings over 9.5 rebounds plus assists. And the data for this one is fantastic. He's covered this in nine of his last 10 games, a 90% hit rate. Even in his last 20 games, although the data not as good, a 60% hit rate, 12 of his last 20 games, he has cashed this over. And on the 2023 season as a whole, a 54% hit rate, 31 out of 57 games, he's cashed this over. Look at the head-to-head data. Again, it's similar to Josh Hart. The last time these two teams played was back in March of last year. He had seven rebounds and three assists. Uh, the Knicks are a pretty good defensive team here. You see here, they actually, versus the point guard position, they don't usually give up a ton of rebounds and assists, but De'Aaron Fox is a superstar, a little bit of a different category than most point guards. Um, he did cover this the last time they played, and it was against Jalen Brunson, so the same matchup, and he had this again. He's just been a covering machine in this line, and he's done it against some teams that are pretty good defensively versus the point guard position. He still cashes this line. I really like this for the sixth and final prop of our straight bet segment. All right, guys, now we're going to go ahead and switch over to our player prop segment for today's slate. I actually said earlier in the video I had a three-leg parlay. I actually have a four-leg parlay to close out the weekend. Again, I don't do videos on Sundays, guys, so this is it for me today. Let's go ahead, finish off strong. We've got a four-leg parlay that I'm really, really hyped about. All right, guys, so going right back into the outlier screen. Again, we're not going to have to spend much time on this one here. We're going back to Mitch. I'm throwing the exact same prop, the exact same value, over 17 and a half points plus assists. I could go at the 15 and a half points plus assist mark at minus 205. The data is actually even better at that level. Uh, I'm I'm going to stick with the 17 and a half though. I know it's riskier, but I think that he's going to cash this regardless, um, whether it's at 17 and a half or 15 and a half. I'm going to take it, bring the odds of the parlay up uh, so we can get a higher hit. Again, shaving two points plus assists, I'm not too concerned about it. So that's the first leg of our four leg parlay. And again, guys, saving us some time here, the second leg of our four-leg parlay, we're going with the exact same thing. Colin Sexton, under 28.5 points plus assists. I told you guys, I love this prop for tonight's slate. It's my favorite prop of the slate tonight. I'm going to stick with it. I'm not changing anything. We're taking the exact same line. So obviously, I've already showed you guys the data. But that is the second leg of our four-leg parlay. I love this Sexton prop, second out of a back-to-back against one of the best defensive teams in the NBA against the shooting guard position. You can't get better than this. All right, guys. Third leg of our four-leg parlay. Again, a, a player we've already shown this video, but this one is a different prop and a different line. So we're sticking with DeAndre Ayton in that uh, Blazers-Pelicans game. We took him at over 32.5 points plus rebounds in the straight prop segment. Here, we're doing just points, and we're taking him at over 17.5 points. Now, this is an alternate line, but the data is fantastic. He's covered this over 17.5 point mark in eight of his last 10 games. If you stretch that data to his last 20, 14 of his last 20 games, a 70% hit rate. And again, the head-to-head data still works. He had 18 points the last time he played New Orleans. The Pelicans are on a second night of a back-to-back here versus centers. Again, they haven't been fantastic. All that data I gave you guys earlier still applies but we're going just points. We're not factoring rebounds in here. I think DeAndre Ayton should be able to score 18 points. He did it already once versus the Pelicans last month. I think he should be able to do it again here tonight. And all right, guys, here we go. Fourth and final leg of today's four-leg parlay. Thunder Grizzlies, 8 p.m. kickoff. Josh Giddy over 14 and a half points plus assists. Make your comments, make your jokes, but Josh Giddy has been playing fantastic of late. He's been heating up, and I expect him to cover this line again tonight. You see here, Josh Giddy has covered this in seven of his last 10 games, including six in a row. He's cashed this over. Even in the last 20 games, a 55% hit rate, 11 of his last 20 games. You could even go lower on this. Uh, we have it at minus 135 right now on DraftKings, but you could go lower to like 13 and a half. The data does get a little bit better, but we're going to ride at the 14 and a half mark. 
And even in the 2023 season as a whole, a 55% hit rate, 36 out of 65 games this year, he's cashed us over. So although we like to make our jokes, Giddy's been covering this line the majority of the time this season. You look at the head-to-head matchup, three of the last four times he's faced off with the Memphis Grizzlies, he has cashed us over, including the two times they played this year on December 18th. And then just last week uh, on March 10th, he had 16 points and four assists and a blowout win for the Thunder. Again, if you do take that over 13 and a half point line, you can do that to be safer. Then the data becomes even stronger because he hit it in each of his last four times. But we're going to go ahead here and take the 13, the 14 and a half, excuse me, point line from minus 135. Again, the data is strong. You look at the matchup. Memphis, uh, overall in the year, they're pretty good defensively, but not fantastic. All the injuries and whatnot has, you know, has skewed the numbers in our favor here. I do like this prop. Again, make your jokes. I know Josh Giddy, he's burned us. He's burned myself. If you watch my videos, he's burned me before, but of late, he's been a covering machine. All right, guys, there's our four leg ticket. Just a quick little recap here. Michich over 17 and a half points plus assists. Colin Sexton earned 28 and a half points plus assists. DeAndre Ayton over 17 and a half points. And Josh Giddy over 14 and a half points plus assists. You parlay all four of those legs together, and you got to parlay a plus 748 odds. Not too shabby for a four leg parlay. Guys, that is it for me today. Thank you very much, as always, for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, drop a comment down below. Make sure to share St. Patty's Day, what you guys are doing, your plans, all that good stuff. As always, guys, appreciate you guys. I will be back on Monday with a new NBA player prop video. Until then, hope you all have a good weekend. Hope we're all winners. Uh, have a happy St. Patrick's Day. Be safe, but have fun.